think this is really interesting because it gets a little bit to the, to the future of content that, that we're going to get yeah. into in a second. But this attitude of light touch, yeah. I'd love you to tell us a little bit about whether it's still a philosophy of Netflix yeah, to be yeah. relatively light touch. Because that is something that would distinguish Netflix from, say, an HBO or some yeah. other media company that's famous for the executives giving the directors, the producers, the actors really strong notes when they see those initial yeah. cuts. Yeah, strong and lengthy notes. Yes. <laughs> uh, my, it's funny, but at the beginning, it was mostly out of necessity. We had no people. I didn't have a enough, I had no team to give notes. And I told David Fincher, you don't want me giving you notes. You don't want me giving you notes. And he said, no, I might want some feedback. I go, I bet you don't. I bet you don't. Um, and, but I, but I, I knew enough people who were making shows for other people who had shared these horror stories. Mm -hmm. uh, there's one show that was on Cinemax that would get 80 pages of notes per episode. Good God. So thinking about it, that process and how they would go through it, and I knew that it made everybody crazy. Mm -hmm. And one thing that we had a, a really interesting corporate philosophy at Netflix around our business culture, uh, which was you know, trying to hire rock stars and give them the tools to do the best work of their life and get out of their way and empower them and look for the people who want to work in that environment, not with a lot of rules. And it works, it turns out it works really great in the creative process too. So I, the real art of what I do and what my team does is pick that show, pick that show runner, pick that writer, and then, let them, then give them the tools they need and let them get it done. They're not, we're not gonna, I'm not gonna write a better episode of television than Bo Willimon, you know? So, and, and my, so this, the real art is just like any other executive hire is hire someone who's better at it than you are. Right. And then help and, and support the artist, don't make them crazy. Because a lot of those, in those notes that you're getting from the network, it's things like, that person shouldn't have a mustache. <laughs> Why is that person wearing a blue shirt? That, you know, that, those kind of things, you know. Why is the couch facing east instead of west? And, and it's all those kind it's of- Extreme backseat driving. Extreme. Right. extreme. And, and, level. and it's a, there's layers and layers of executives who are petrified for their jobs, who basically want to va add value all the time, and they weigh that value by how much feedback they gave, whether it was useful or not, I think. And then some of it might be a healthy, creative struggle. I mean, maybe, maybe artists need a foe, and the, the studio and the network becomes that foe that drives the artist. There's some of that is true, but for the most part, what I find is no one, they don't want to fight. You know, they really want to make the best things that are possible, the best vision of, the best version of what they came in to sell you.